Hey everybody, Jim Hiles here, First Capital and Go Plan 101. And hey, I just want to make sure that uh, you guys are okay. I'll give you the update here. Um, wife is sequestered somewhere up there in her own room. As most of you know, she has a an issue medically. So we're keeping everybody away from her. So that's working fine. Uh, I'll see her once in a while. In passing, my daughter, who's unfortunately a, a senior at Bucknell, they've canceled the rest of the school year at, at most universities. She's a senior, so we didn't know graduation uh, it's going to look like, but we'll get through it. And uh, I hope you are fine and your family is fine. And uh, and please be safe as we go forward through this uh, unprecedented issue of coronavirus. Um, we've taken a hit, as you know, in the financial markets. Everyone has probably turned on the television at this point, particularly if you're at home. And there are all kinds of views as to what's going on out there. And we're going to give you, or at least my opinion, as to what's happening and as it relates to the financial markets. Um, this is unprecedented, of course. Uh, we've never seen this before. Um, from a, a coronavirus standpoint, I mean, when you look at the, the facts and figures that people generally throw around, I think consensus is that this will pass at some point in the next four to six weeks, or at least for the flattening of the, of the curve concept. What does that mean financially? Markets have taken a hit. Uh, we um, made some decisions earlier in uh, the year which happened to be in the right decision so far, and that is we took some money off the, off the risk and put it to cash. So if you look at some of your accounts, you'll see there's a fair amount of cash in there right now. Something we normally don't do, but cash is a pretty nice asset to have, at least at the current uh, current situation. Um, we are gonna be looking to put that back to work. There's, there, we don't wanna hold that forever. And, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about what that looks like as well in this uh, today. So. Uh, focus on getting to the other side. The other side of darkness is light. That's a great quote. And that's what we're going to be doing here. We think, you know, let's not um, go panic mode and, and, and run for the hills here. And we don't think it's it's, it's going to be that uh, horrific. Uh, could it be a 2008 type of experience? Yes, even if it is, we're going to be planning for it, looking after your money in case it happens. And we're doing things already to hopefully protect where we can come in later and take advantage. Uh, things can get messy before they recover. And uh, we've just seen the CARES Act come out and this huge stimulus packages that are being uh, put upon the world. So uh, we're not sure how that's all gonna work out yet, but uh, it needed to be done just to create a positive confidence uh, within the consumers in particular. Um, understand what separates success from failure. And these are some of the tried and true principles of investing. Uh, we are keeping stocks, companies, stocks that we like and, and sectors that we like that are really designed to be a long-term hold. So a portion of the portfolio will always be invested because the best way to invest long-term is to stay in the market and ride these ups and downs out. That being said, we do have some opportunity dry powder. We're going to be taking advantage of some um, high quality companies. We're going to be buying some high quality companies, those which have the you know, least amount of debt, least cash flow issues, uh, higher profitability are they probably the stalwarts uh, uh, in their market. Um, these are the companies, the high quality companies are like what we'd like to focus on. Uh, we're not going to be speculating here on various ups and downs on daily news. Uh, we do think there's a great opportunity in the bond and credit markets that will unveil itself. If you're not paying attention to those markets, you should probably look at them. They have also taken a pretty big hit along with the stock market. Not unusual in a crash type situation to have all markets get hit equally. Um, this too shall pass, we shall persevere. Um, watch the CARES Act video that I did. It's a long one, so it's about nine minutes or so, but get a cup of coffee, hang in there. And, and if you wanna learn more about the, at least the highlights of what I learned in the CARES Act over the weekend, uh, we're gonna be looking at how to apply uh, uh, the CARES Act to you and businesses all across our, our client list. So just a quick look here at the markets in general. Things must be kept in perspective. This is the S&P chart. This is actually a 12 month look back. And if you've kind of followed this chart from here on the left side, whoops, went too far. Here on the left side, you know, we're not that far down from a year ago at this point. Now, don't get me wrong, this drop was the fastest on record. It was one of the steepest on record, if not the steepest on record. And it went all the way down to a negative 33% rate of return. But put that in perspective. I mean, we've given away a couple of years of return, but we haven't given away all of our money and it's not all evaporated. It's still gonna be there. 
uh, it did have a rebound down 22 and a half percent now after a significant rebound during the last uh, uh, few days. Um, what do we think about the market, the S&P, the stock market going forward? One of the things we need to be careful of is getting um, over uh, exuberant about uh, what has happened this week and, you know, 10 percent down day, 10 percent up day and so on and so forth. Uh, we don't think that this is the bottom. We, we don't think this is, the, is it's an end of the bad news. Uh, we think that the bottoming in the stock market generally is a process, not a point in time, and generally not the first point in time. So I throw this chart up here. This is the actually the S&P uh, looking back and, and through at least the history that I've studied in, uh, that I've been living in. Um, and you can see what goes on from time to time. These are 1974. We had a horrible market crash as well. 73, 74 oil. I wasn't there, but I was. Oh, I wasn't participating anyway. Uh, but you see these little things down here. This is where we have just bad, um, what they call rate of change, uh, bad prices going down. We need to be careful to assume that that the worst is over. We don't know if it is yet. So I'm just cautioning everybody to say, hey, wait a minute, uh, be prepared because when you look at each of each of these, 1974. 1981, 1987, 2001, 2008, 2011, and now 2020. We had what we called a retest of the market bottom. In, in easy language, we weren't finished going down yet because there was there's still a lot out there we don't know about the virus, about what it means to the markets, what it means to society in general. So be very careful here. Be, we're being very cautious in here. Um, and we're going to be looking for opportunities, but we're not going to be in a hurry yet. We do think there is a uh, an opportunity for a recovery. And with all of the money that's been put into the markets, this should be a really good opportunity at some point in the near future, because there is so much cash out there that's going to help everything pretty much quickly rebound because the cost of cash is going to be so low. So we're looking forward to those days. I'm sure you are, too. If you have any questions, Please feel free to reach me. We are here. Uh, stay safe, stay well, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.